or for the next little while in Romans, Paul discusses their relationships one will experience as a believer. Romans 12, 1 and 2 discusses the believer's relationship with the Father. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That is how, not the what of the covenant relationship, man with his God. The what is Leviticus 26, 3 through 12 of the New International Version says, If you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commandments, I will send you rain in its season, and the ground will yield its crops and the trees their fruit. Your threshing will continue until grape harvest, and the grape harvest will continue until planting and you will eat all the food you want and live in the safety of your land. I will grant peace in the land, and you will lie down, and no one will make you afraid. I will remove wild beasts from the land, and the sword will not pass through your country. You will pursue your enemies, and they will fall by the sword before you. Fire of your Five of you will chase a hundred, and a hundred of you will chase ten thousand, and your enemies will fall by the sword before you. I will look on you with favor and make you fruitful and increase your numbers, and I will keep my covenant with you. You will still be eating last year's harvest, when you will have to move it out to make room for the new. I will put my dwelling place among you, and I will not abhor you. I will walk among you and be your God, and you will be my people. And this is the covenant relationship. Obey God, and you will be his people. He will be your God. How does one obey God? How does one present himself a living sacrifice? So, brothers and sisters, because of God's mercy, I encourage you to present your bodies as the living sacrifice that is holy and pleasing to God. This is your appropriate priestly service. Paul encourages believers to submit to God. How to do that is revealed in James 4, 7, and 8. James 4, 7, and 8. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your spirits, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. To submit to God, refuse to sin and repent. Submitting to God is a decision. This decision is the decision to obey God. First, decide to exercise self-control. Then pray for forgiveness. Promise never to do it again. Resisting the devil is refusing to sin. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Repenting is drawn nigh to God by praying and asking for forgiveness of past sins, cleansing your hands, purifying your hearts is part of repentance. It is purposing to never repeat the sin. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you can figure out what God's will is what is good, pleasing, and mature. The first step in 
obeying God is repentance. Hypocrites call this salvation. It is only the first step in the decision to obey God. The second step is to be holy. 1 Peter 1.16 says, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Leviticus 11.45 says, For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt. To be your God, ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. What does it mean to be holy? I have heard many different definitions. Pure, righteous, pious, devoted. Here in James, the Bible defines it as different. Other. Proverbs 4, 14 and 15 says, Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. Do not do as the ungodly, shun their ways. This is being holy. Shun their patterns and let God change you. He will renew your mind, which will enable you to recognize His desires for your whole life. All you do is decide, and God takes over from there. The first step is yours, and the rest is up to Him. James 4.8 says, Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. You start it, and He'll do the rest. In conclusion, this passage is discussing a believer's relationship with God. It is the believer's responsibility to obey, and God will be his God. Obey and he'll do the rest. Let's pray. In the spirit of the living God, thank you for this lesson. Protect us and keep us safe. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, get lost.